Item 6B, adopt resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Griffin Structures for project and construction management services for the recreation and aquatic center project in an amount not to exceed $1,079,000 to be funded through a grant from the San Bruno Community Foundation. City sure. Manager. Uh, Javon Grogan, City Manager. Uh, uh, Jimmy Tan, our Public Works Director, will deliver this report. But I would just like to say that the item that is before you is just one step uh, along the path to develop the new Aquatic and Recreation Center. And so we are in the middle of schematic design and we provided a presentation to the San Bruno Community Foundation uh, I, last week uh, at their Wednesday night meeting. And so we will be providing a full update to the public uh, on the April 9th City Council meeting. Uh, but this is one component of the project to provide uh, project management, construction management, uh, inspection and testing services for the project. The uh, total amount of this contract is budgeted within the uh, grant that we will be receiving from the foundation uh, for the construction of it and uh, Director Tan will talk about the, the process and a little bit more on the services that this vendor will provide. Director Tan. Great, thanks. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The um, objective of the item tonight in front of you tonight is regards to the you know, authorization of award of contract with uh, Griffin Structures for project and construction management services for the, uh, the Recreation Aquatic Center project, an amount not to exceed $1,079,000. And the agenda for the presentation is as follows. First, I'll provide a brief background on the project and how we got to where we are today. And then I'll provide an overview of the consultant selection and the criteria used to select the consultant. And I'll discuss the scope of work, uh, schedule and budget, and as well as the alternatives and, la and recommendations. So here's the, um, the background on how, we, how the project evolved. Uh, in the aftermath of the devastating 2010 PG&E's, a gas pipeline explosion, the city negotiated a restitution settlement with pg e in the total amount of $70 million in 2012. The city council then determined that the funds would be used for the long-term benefit of the entire San Bruno community. And in 2013, the city established an uh, independent not-for-profit not not San Bruno Community Foundation to manage the restitution settlement funds and to oversee the use of the funds. In 2015, the foundation conducted a community listening campaign to identify the commu community priorities uh, for use of the restitution funds. The campaign, uh, campaign identified the community priorities for the replacement or addition of new community facilities and to support the delivery and expansion of the community programs and services. So following the completion of the listen campaign, the foundation identified that $50 million of the restitution settlement funds will be dedicated for the design and construction of one or more of the, the facilities. And the city recognized that the $50 million uh, would not be sufficient, therefore conducted a subsequent uh, discussion with the community in uh, 2016. And that process concluded in 2017 uh, with the city council approval of the community facility prioritization report, uh, which identified replacement of the recreation aquatic center as the community highest priority. And also in 2017, uh, through a competitive selection process, staff recommended the city council to approve a contract with group four to perform the conceptual design alternatives for their new uh, project at the rec center, rec and aquatic center. The development of the conceptual design included several components such as site analysis, uh, building design alternatives, evaluation of project budget, um, and operation uh, strategies, uh, selection of recommended alternatives, and public engagement. And that conceptual phase was completed in uh, 2018. And also in 2018, um, after completion of the conceptual phase, the City Council approved a contract with Group 4 to perform the development of the design and construction documents. And that scope of work includes uh, the schematic design development, uh, design development and review, uh, uh, preparing the construction documents uh, and the bid documents, as well as support to uh, bidding and award of construction contracts and, and construction supports. So currently now in 2019, the schematic design development process has commenced and which the city manager mentioned, it will be completed in a couple of months, then group four will proceed with the preparation of the design documents. And lastly, construction is anticipated sometime in um, 2020. So as previously mentioned tonight, the action is to award a 
the contract uh, for the project construction management services. Uh, due to the limited staff resources, the city is unable to dedicate a staff person to perform as project manager on this project. And the selected firm will serve as the city's representative to oversee the work of the architect, the contractor, the subcontractors to ensure the project is completed in conformance with the city scope, schedule, budget requirements through the design and construction phases of the project. To select the consultant, uh, first uh, staff issued the RFP, a request for proposal in September 2018. The city received a total of four proposals and these proposals were evaluated based on the criteria that you uh, see on the screen here. Uh, we looked at the work plan and approach uh, experience to make sure that the firm has experience with the project and, and construction management services for similar projects in size and complexity. That includes the swimming pool com component, uh, the quality, quality and completeness of the proposal, the qualifications and experience of the staff, and, um, and we also reviewed the manpower allocations for our labor effort to determine how it compares to other firms in order to, to, to determine uh, whether the firm can effectively and efficiently complete the project. And although the city is not required to review the costs, we did review that as well. Uh, the cost proposals ranged from $930,000 to $2 million. The city conducted interviews uh, with the firms for this project. Three of the four interviews, three of the four firms were interviewed um, with the staff from the city as well as the Commu Community Foundation in, in December 2014. Uh, December 14, 2018. And based on the evaluation of these proposals, uh, reference checks and interviews, uh, staff is recommending Griffin Structures uh, to provide the professional uh, project and uh, ma uh, construction management services for the project. So here are some of uh, Griffin Structures' experience. Uh, majority of the firm's work uh, has been for the public sector. The firm has managed and provided similar services for numerous uh, municipal agencies related to construction of community centers, sport complexes, and uh, libraries. And some of the projects are highlighted on a the slide there, and you can see the Aquatic Center renovation in Mission of Yale, uh, the Lake Forest Recreation Center and Sport Complex, um, the Fullerton Recreation and Aquatic Center. Um, there's also the Half a Million uh, Library, which was recently completed, and currently they're working on the Burlingame Community Center as well. The scope of work and schedule um, includes the following. Uh, first is the coordination and communication and work with the, uh, the city's team and architect and contractor. Uh, since there are multiple firms, departments and stakeholders involved on this project, we want a firm that is capable of uh, community, community, communicating uh, the work and working with everyone to ensure the project is successfully delivered. The firm will be required to oversee both the design and construction projects uh, budget and schedule uh, to ensure the cost does not exceed the available budget. The review will be performed at every design uh, submittal stage. The firm will also perform quality control and review of all project del deliverables to resolve any design conflicts and address them prior to bid. Uh, independent cost estimates will be conducted as well to confirm that the estimate is prepared by the architect. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's in line with what, is, what should be. Since the funding for the project is uh, limited, the firm will conduct their own project estimate and compare with the architects. Uh, the firm will also perform value engineering uh, at various design stages as well. The service also includes construction uh, management and inspection services. The firm will observe activities during construction to ensure that the products are being supplied and, and construction work being uh, performed are in, in compliance with the drawings and specifications. The construction costs will also be monitored. Change orders will be reviewed for justification and will be negotiated with the contractor. So as for the project schedule, the schematic design and preparation of the construction documents will take approximately 16 months to complete. And the bidding and construction phase is currently estimated to be about 24 months. And as for the fiscal impact, the overall uh, Griffin Structures proposed cost is uh, $929,000. Staff is currently proposing to include a contingency of $150,000 for additional services, and this contingency will be initiated if required for extra services performed outside the original scope of work after approval uh, by the city. And this inclusion of this contingency will prevent any delays in having to come back to council for budget amendments in the future. The uh, foundation has committed to its intent to, to grant the total budget of a uh, million dollars and, and seventy-nine uh, thousand dollars, which was approved last week by the board. Um, and following city council award of contract tonight, staff will work with the foundation to execute a grant agreement 
uh, to reimburse the city for expenses related to this project. As for the alternatives, you know, here's some to consider. Do not authorize the, the contract with Griffin Structure and direct staff to choose a different firm. Uh, direct staff to work with Griffin Structure to further um, ref review and modify the scope of work for uh, the services to reduce cost, and uh, or request staff to issue a request for um, RFPs uh, for this project again. But currently, staff is recommending uh, the council to award a contract to Griffin Structure uh, for this project. So this concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And the staff from Griffin Structure is here tonight as well, uh, if you would like to ask him any questions. Yes. Uh, thank you, Director. Uh, questions from Council? Please. So, um, the project's been a long time coming. I think we're all excited to see it uh, come to fruition. The last thing I want to do is slow it up, but a million <laughs> bucks is, um, that's, a, that's a big price tag. And um, so, Early on, when we started down this road, I um, I suggested, and, and the mayor uh, concurred, agreed to have a, a, a basically a little mini oversight committee on this project, so that we could keep uh, an advisory committee to keep uh, track of the expenses and make sure that things were were in alignment. And so, um, I, I would want to hear from the members of that, just in terms of the thought process that went behind this. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about um, the day-to-day -day involvement of of this. Um, I imagine it, may, it will probably be not just one person, but maybe multiple people at different phases that would be participating. Uh, what sort of reports we could expect to get, uh, what kind of check-ins we would get uh, at, at council meetings to keep us up to date on what's going on. Um, Again, I'm really concerned about, I mean, this r translates to roughly 2% of the total budget. Um, I, I don't think this was initially, this particular expense was envisioned initially when we started scoping out, and I know that we're already talking about maybe scaling down some things to try to make it fit within the budget. So, um, you know, before we bite off that other chunk, I want to make sure that we've really uh, taken into consideration all of the different components, uh, potentially other things that come could come up along the way and just make sure that we're not um, setting ourselves up to come up short at the end. City Manager? Sure. So there, there were a couple parts there that I think uh, should be answered by different individuals. Um, the first, uh, one of the parts was, um, was this envisioned in the initial budget? Um, there are essentially three parts. <clears throat> pre-construction project management, construction management, and then inspection and testing. The latter two were always envisioned. The portion that was, that was added uh, was the pre-construction support from this vendor. The, the reason why that was added was we are in the middle um, in schematic design of taking the community's conceptual design and what I like to call, we're going from the 30,000 foot to literally one foot. Um, and we wanted the entity that would be on site day to day uh, throughout construction that has experience in building similar pools in with us as we're going through this process. And so there was an additional add, but um, it wasn't the entire uh, scope that was, that was added. Uh, we can accommodate this in the uh, $50 million budget. There absolutely are some uh, budgetary challenges that we are working through that we presented to the foundation that we've worked with the advisory committee on. Uh, the advisory committee is made up of eight individuals, two members of the city council, two members of the planning commission, two members of the park and rec commission, and two member, two representatives from the community foundation. Uh, that committee has met on a monthly basis. There are a number of technical advisory committees of staff that meet. There is also an internal steering committee uh, of staff members that is made up of myself, the finance director, the public works director, the community services director, uh, a number of other people in community uh, services, um, and I'm, I'm leaving out, uh, and, and, and development services, our community development department. And so we have a lot of hands on the project, um, and we will kind of give the full update on where we are on April 9th. Um, I think another question was, uh, what will be the day-to-day 
uh, involvement, and I think the best person to answer that is a combination of Jimmy and the consultant. So I'll turn it over to Jimmy. Yeah, so uh, John Hughes from Griffin Structures here, and day-to-day -day involvement, I think currently you know, there will be a project manager dedicated for the schematic um, design during the design stage, and, and during the construction, there will be a construction manager and an inspector um, involved for this project. So, and there will be estimators as well that are being proposed to review um, you know, the cost estimates that are being you know, performed as part of this project. John. Yeah, um, John. Honorable Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, Council Members, my name is John Hughes. I'm Vice President of Operations for Griffin Structures. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to stand before you and, and have you consider bringing us on for this exciting project. To answer your question, the um, the day-to-day -day <coughs> operations, you will have a full-time construction manager located on site observing the, the progress in the field. That individual, uh, during construction, evaluates all the materials being put in. Um, it manages, or they manage, um, all the communications going on between the contractor and the architect and the city. Also coordinating all of the utility coordination for PG&E and other utilities involved, uh, as well as being an interface for the um, city inspection services. One of the main roles and one of the main benefits that a construction manager brings to this kind of project, especially a big, complex project, is exactly what the city manager described earlier, which is to bring us in during the design phase. Because in many respects, we function like a police officer. We are there to represent you and to enforce the documents as they've been designed. But if we have the opportunity to participate in how those documents are prepared and how um, some of the details, some of the nuances, some of the challenges that we've run into in the past, then we can head off challenges before they materialize in the field. That's probably the best way to preserve your investment and to ensure that the project goes smoothly, is to be able to think through the challenges during the design phase, during the early phasing project. and. Um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why it's important to bring a, a firm like ours on early in the project. Um, as for some of the reports that you'll get, we produce change order logs, we produce monthly reports that will go to city staff that will make its way to you. If there is an advisory committee, um, we would present um, a monthly report to that committee, giving uh, that, that group an update on engineering challenges, schedule updates, activities in the field, um, change orders that might be on the, on the table, um, potential conflicts, um, or uh, unique installations that are upcoming. You'll also receive, um, the, the, the construction manager will produce a daily report in addition to a daily report produced by the contractor. And then we will also, um, as part of our scope, there is a comprehensive uh, cloud-based data or document management system that captures every document that's being produced uh, on this project. So you can imagine with a, with, a, with a project of this size, you will have requests for information in the range of three to 400 questions from a contractor going to the architect. It's our job to make sure that that information is conveyed adequately, the answer is consistent with the documents, and it doesn't add time or money, if at all possible. That's just one aspect. There's also um, documentation for every material that gets in, in, installed. Um, there's, there's verification in paperwork form of, of that material uh, as in the form of a submittal, as well as shop drawings, um, special inspection reports, testing reports, um, environmental inspections that are related to um, the um, best management practices for water quality. Uh, it ends up creating um, an enormous trove of documents that we manage uh, in a cloud-based document management system that gets turned over to the city at the end of the project. So, and, and that's maybe 50% <laughs> of all that's involved. So, but I'm happy to take any other question you guys might have. Uh, go ahead, Sam. Uh, you also handle neighborhood concerns and questions. So can you talk we a little do. bit about that? So we, um, like the slide showed, we do almost all of our work for public agencies, so cities and counties like yours. And we find that 
being able to engage the public and the surrounding neighborhood in an effective way is the best way for um, keeping their support of the project. Um, so we, we have strategies that we pursue or that we recommend that we put in place that engages the surrounding neighbors, the, the, the very folks that are, that are most impacted by the construction activity. They're usually the ones that are often the most frustrated by the construction activity, whether it's noise or dust or trucks or, or just the, 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 the messiness of, of a construction project. So we will implement measures such as a, or will recommend the implementation of measures such as um, a 24 hour hotline. We often find that that's a, a great way to allow residents to just call in and say, I saw something that I didn't understand and they leave a message and they are guaranteed a phone call back within 40, uh, 24 hours. Um, we monitor that, that voicemail system. We, we recommend a response in talking with city staff and then either we or someone from city staff can call that resident back. We find that just that alone, giving uh, the neighbors, the, the local residents, uh, a chance to be heard, a sense that when they have a thought or a concern or a question that there's someone there to ask a question to and they get a response is 90% of what gets, uh, gains their support. We do public outreach, we'll do um, door knockers, we can do flyers. Um, we've even done um, quarterly job site tours. Uh, it, a lot of this has to do with how comfortable the city is in terms of what they want to introduce. But where you engage the neighbors and, and demonstrate to them some of the exciting things that are being built, um, we will also, also prepare and publish a quarterly update that says, this is what has happened to date, and in the next two to three months, you can expect these activities, especially if there's things that might be noisy or things that might, um, they, they, they might see something that, like a big concrete uh, crane that's dumping concrete into a, to build the pool. They might wonder what that is. That This kind of communication allows them to have a better understanding of, of what's going on. Michael, did that answer or you follow up for John Weiser? Follow-up, please. Okay. Um, so roughly 15% contingency on this. Um, in your experience, uh, what sorts of things might lead to having to dig into a contingency? What, what kind of things might come up that would trigger that? For, for our contract, um, few. Our personal goal is to be the one consultant that never has to ask for more money because it's our job to save your money. Mm -hmm. So we're the ones that are fighting against the contractor and every other consultant and, and trying to, to deny them their request. However, there are times where our contract runs out and probably the only reason why that t contingency would be tapped would be if there was, uh, in the course of construction, if there was unreasonable delays to the project that, that required the contractor to exceed the, con the, the duration of the contract and therefore required us to be on the project longer than anticipated, then that could trigger the use of some of that contingency. But I'd say even in that case, we often try to manage our own time and our own hours in a way that we can adjust for that. We try to. Um, once we're under construction and you have a full-time person there, it's, it's difficult if, if the project goes on delay for three months and no activity happens. It's difficult for us to take that person, send them away, and then bring them back when construction starts. So we would negotiate and work with staff on the, the best use of that time, but that's very rare. We rarely, I, I don't, in my career, I haven't seen a delay like that. Um, and, you know, this contingency is, is it's, it, we're st starting to see other cities do this with uh, services like this on large projects just because there are still, this early in the, in the stage, there's still so many unknowns that, you know, one of our key uh, contributions is to help determine how much time the contractor has. And, um, but, but not knowing that yet, that would be the only reason why you'd want to hold on to that contingency. If for some reason we find halfway through design that they're going to need two years to build the project instead of 16 months or 18 months or whatever that is. But in almost every case, we do everything we can to not, to not even touch it. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So you basically you're, you're signing up for the three years and four months roughly, but if it goes well yeah. beyond that, then that would be 
Okay. Thank you. I'm good. Laura? I would just say that I, um, I'm actually, the con conversation, or a comment was made about what was the process to get down there. And I know that when the, the discussion was presented to us uh, by the city manager, it was definitely something that I think we all felt very favorable about. And the reason for that is, is that we just don't have the staff to dedicate full time on a, on a project like this. And we know that mistakes or things not uh, properly managed can cost us a lot of money down the road. Um, especially, you know, one of the items that you mentioned was just making sure the right materials are installed. You know, those kinds of things can cost us a lot of money five years from now, 10 years from now, et cetera. Or the things that we don't think about or, or make sure we include based on the experience that, that your company has. So I think it's, in the end, it, it, although it seems like a costly uh, piece to it, it's actually a very, uh, you know, it could be two major issues. It can be up in, up in, in, in $500,000, and we're right there in terms of saving money. So um, I think it's an added benefit, and I think it really takes off a lot of pressure by staff. And managing a number of different trades on a project is challenging in itself. And in order to have something happen in the time frame that happens, because every day our doors are closed, is costing our city money. Marty? Yes, thank you. Um, can we just go back? Um, as a uh, former inspector, I, I truly understand and value bringing on the inspection team as early as you can. Um, so my questions are going to be coming from the inspector side of uh, my experience. And so have you worked with Group 4 before? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, those projects that were treated on this other side, like how many, yeah. or what, what can you tell us about we are currently working with Group 4 on the Burlingame Community Center and the Yorba Linda Library. Uh, the Burlingame Community Center just started recently. Um, I, our contract began, I want to say, two months ago, three months ago. Um, and they're early, they're, they're almost paralleling you in their design. They're a little bit further along. Um, Sorry. You've got a good voice. They, they can hear you. <laughs> the, uh, the Yorba Linda Library Project, we're also working with them, and that's under construction uh, currently. And I would say that um, uh, they're one of the best architecture firms that I've worked with. I, I think you're, you're going to be very well served with Group 4. Uh, the, the experience that we're having, you can always tell a good, contra a good architect by how the project goes once it's under construction. They're great on paper. All of them are great on paper. But once it actually gets implemented in the field, that's when all the problems really start breaking out. And so we're seeing construction underway right now with them on a project, and it's going very well. They're, they're responsive, they're timely, their documents are comprehensive, and they're, and they're thoughtful. So um, we're excited to work with them on another project. Um, I, we've, we've met with them already to discuss strategies on this project in anticipation of hoping to work together with them on this and thinking through ways that we can work together. It's, it's an important thing that your construction management team and your architectural team have a good collaborative relationship because when, they're, when they can be adversarial, um, it, it just doesn't go very well. And, and one of the things that we like to um, advocate and we, we take pride in is creating a collaborative work environment for the entire team, even with the contractor. Believe it or not, you can actually turn a contractor a general contractor into an ally, into a, into a team member. Um, and part of that is, is through having good documents. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so based on the current schedule, you, you know it, when would, and maybe this is to you or to our city manager or whomever, um, when, when do you start work? We, you get the, it, the project gets awarded mm -hmm. uh, and you're starting and going to be at the next meeting or how, how is that going to work? Sure. Um, and so our next internal steering committee meeting uh, is tomorrow. Um, and uh, we have already been working on the contract. Um, but one of the things we, we want to do is uh, bring them in early. So we have tentatively scheduled for them to sit on tomorrow's meeting. That starts at I don't know two or three o'clock. Oh. That is early. 
Yeah, um, we're ready to start tomorrow. <laughs> and that's great. So as you ramp up, maybe you can help, help uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about having the, would you call it the project, a resident engineer or, or the program it's manager? It's a construction manager. Construction yeah. manager, and right. then he's going to have an, he or she will have an inspector force. It's going to, uh, the, the um, construction manager will also be doing quality assurance. Okay. So the role of the, of the construction manager is to verify that all, uh, like we said, all the documents and all the products mm -hmm. are being installed per plans and specs. But more, uh, um, in addition to that, making sure that the specialty inspectors are doing their job. So you're going to have a special geotechnical inspector mm -hmm. that, that we will help you uh, hire. We'll help produce that RFP to bring them on. They're going to do all of the specialty inspections that have to do with geotechnical inspections, um, as well as special inspections related to concrete, concrete placement and steel. steel welding and field welding like mm -hmm. that. Um, those are specialty kinds of inspections that a special license is required. So our job is to bring on the right firm that has the right scope and oversee that inspector and make sure that they do their job in a timely way and that they're verifying that the contractor is building the project per plans and specs uh, on that level, as well as coordinating with your building inspector, as well as any utility inspectors that also come in. Um, and then also interfacing with the architectural engineering team, they have their own inspections. So the structural engineer has to come and verify that the structure of the building is suitable. Uh, the civil engineer has to verify that the grades are suitable. So quality assurance is beyond just our individual eyes and ears. It's actually us coordinating the entire quality assurance program. Um, and that's, that's the job of the construction managers to oversee and, and organize and ensure that that takes place. Okay, sounds pretty good. <laughs> that's it. Okay, any other questions? Circling back around to council. Absolutely. Uh, is there a speaker card? <clears throat> nope. There should be. Uh, I've just asked the city clerk. Is there? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome to. I just wanted to make sure for her record. Please. I knew the first speaker card. No, we're talking. I was talking about the second one. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. No, That's I, fine. I filled two boxes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good evening again, Simon Mazzola. Um, a couple of concerns. Uh, the presentation uh, from the potential construction manager seemed a, a good one. Um, but I think that you're putting the cart before the horse a little bit. I've heard that we don't know what the numbers are on the project, and that makes sense. If the plans aren't drawn, you can't submit anything to a contractor to get a price on it. And I think that's where we're at. We don't have the plans yet. Um, so we don't know what we're sending out for bid, and if we don't know what we're sending out for bid, we don't know how much it's going to cost. We don't know if we can afford it. I've heard that there are some concerns about the affordability of this. Um, so spending a million dollars at this point, or at least committing to a million dollars at this point, I think is putting the cart before the horse. We don't know if we can build this project. Um, I would recommend a delay on that. If you don't know if you can afford it, why well, commit to a million dollars to have somebody manage a project you don't know you can build? I would hate for the city already in a budget deficit to take on a project that causes a lot of financial problems. So I think it's more prudent to know, can we afford it before we move forward with these steps? I understand how construction works. It's part of what I do. Um, and I know that owners always want to move forward quickly, but what I always recommend to them is take it slow. Make sure you're taking things one step at a time. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself out of eagerness and overcommit for things you can't afford. Um, secondly, uh, I don't know why we don't have internal people to handle this. I know this is a big project, but I've heard on other projects that we have budgeted money for construction management or something like that. And I keep thinking, we, we're a business, we're a town, we do a lot of construction. This is a big project for us. Why are we constantly hiring construction managers? Why don't I just hire the right person to do this kind of work in-house? Um, I understand that perhaps we don't have that capacity, but we knew this was coming. Why didn't we get it? So, you know, in terms of dealing with budgets and being a little bit overdrawn this year and maybe going into next year, it's usually a better idea to have the staff on hand rather than to hire it out. Um, 
So uh, just to recap, if we don't know if we can afford it, I think it's premature to go into this. The company does sound like a good one. Uh, I would defer to staff if they vetted them and they think they're, they're a good one. I don't have any reason to argue that. I just don't know. It doesn't seem to me that we're ready to do that if we don't know if we can afford the project. And uh, again, it, why don't we have people on staff to handle this function? Because I think it'd probably be done cheaper, hopefully just as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that's here that wishes to speak on this item? Okay, if not, uh, I'm going to bring it back to council. And uh, if it's okay with staff, I'm going to ask in regard to Simon, um, I think that we did have two specifics, and that was just the cart before the horse, can we afford, as well as uh, why don't we have an internal person uh, that's currently on staff that can uh, do that. The only thing I will comment, Simon, is that uh, when some folks say go slower, uh, a lot of people in our community have said it's it's too slow. We need to speed it up because <laughs> things haven't even started yet. But anyway. Sure. Javon. Sure. Uh, Javon, I will address both of those. I think the first one is, are we putting the cart before the horse by entering into a million dollar contract for project management and inspection and, and testing if we do not know if we can afford the project? I think the premise of that, um, and let me be clear, uh, we $50 million is a lot of money. Um, and we will be able to build a very beautiful aquatic and rec center with $50 million. The question and the budgetary question that we're answering now is exactly what elements will we be able to build? And it's will we build this base, bu a base building or will we have all of the assets that the community envisioned? The easiest one to talk about is the outdoor pool. Uh, certainly this community wanted an indoor pool and the nanatorium, and so the conceptual design has an indoor pool and an outdoor pool. One of the questions that we're asking is can we afford to build that outdoor pool right now? We'll still be able to, to build the year-round indoor pool, but can we really afford the outdoor pool now? Uh, and th that's a tough question uh, that we are really grappling with, and we're doing a number of things uh, to adjust the budget and figure out can we do that now. But we certainly will be able to build a building. Uh, it will be a beautiful building, but it may not have all of the assets that the community envisioned. There may have to be a phase two. And we're talking about, well, what components can we really chunk out as a phase two, and what can we all fit in that $50 million bucket? I think the other question was, um, why can't this be done uh, by staff and why don't we have uh, in inspectors on staff? I think there are two parts to that answer. One, we have very, very qualified staff, but this is a very unique building and it really requires someone with experience in developing recreation centers, but more important, indoor aquatic facilities. The nanatorium is extremely expensive and the air quality systems that you have to have in a building like that are critical, uh, especially in our climate. So having um, skilled people that do this for a living, uh, I think it's critical to having a building that we're proud of uh, and that we can maintain into the future. I think the other part of that is why don't we have more in-house inspectors. Uh, we absolutely do uh, have some in-house uh, inspectors, but we also contract out. Um, one of the reasons is most of the construction work we do is roadway, sewer, water related. There are a short amount of time that you can do that uh, during the year, since it's in the non-rainy months. And so the construction season is not year round. And so when you total up the number of hours that we use, Absolutely, when you just look at the number of hours, we could implore more staff to do that. But when you look at the actual months that we use those, it's actually better to contract it out. And when you just look at the hours, it doesn't um, account for the fact that during that construction season, we have multiple projects going on simultaneously. And so we may be using 300 hours in a month on various projects, but one person can't manage all the projects. And so, most cities actually have a base amount of inspector staff, and then you supplement that with contractors. Um, and so that, that's why we do it in that model, and it's just because of the nature of the projects we construct and when we construct them. Um, thank you for your comments. Marty, did you have something else? Go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I worked here for almost 11 years as a 
as an inspector for public works and there's no way, um, unless you're building these buildings often, you, there's no way you can amass that amount of experience to, 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 to do this work. It's that specialized. All the other inspection parts that were discussed, the geotechnical, the welding, the, the, that's, we, we, we don't do, in the past we haven't done enough of that work to, to retain somebody with that skill set and pay, and pay them enough as a public works inspector. The, those specialty inspectors are costly and only a huge city could, could afford to have a huge staff that can do so many different things and, and that's, I, I, that's why I'm gonna be voting for this proposal is that it's that important and it's that specialized and it, and it, is, it is expensive. So um, I, I hope that answers your question. No, but I do appreciate because it's it's important to ask because somebody else may have that comment. And I will tell you, the last time we had a municipal facility was this, 1987 is when it opened. I was on staff in Parks and Recreation, um, and I can tell you that the director was tasked, Mr. Peter O'Shea, Director O'Shea, to oversee it all. And I, I can tell you how much staff resources it took away. And again, that it had, didn't have the aquatics, didn't have basketball. It was the facility we had here. But um, that's the last time we actually had a municipal facility built in this community. So to, to what Ms. Medina is saying, I've seen it from a different perspective from dirt to when we had the ribbon cutting here um, and the anniversary since. And so it is a specialized thing that, that happens very infrequent to maintain that. Also, when I used to go get permits from various communities, I can tell you that almost every city in town within this jurisdiction of the county hires outside inspectors. Um, a lot of them, some are here, some are in various cities. And also the other element we have is PERS, the retirement system, that obviously you hear very much about. So when you don't have to do the benefits and you don't have to do the long-term um, contribution toward the retirement system, that obviously is a challenge for everybody within the county. Uh, that's some other elements, but just from my my background as well, so thank you. Um, so if there are any other questions or comments from council, this is uh, an action item asking for a resolution. Any action from council? To the chair, motion to adopt resolution authorizing city manager to execute the agreement between Griffin Structures for the project and production management. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion made and second. Madam Clerk. Council member Davis? Aye. Council member Medina? Aye. Council member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Medina? Aye.